So somehow the live audio got scuffed, but I did manage to get my first whip coming back to Slayer in a very long time. And this is a great drop, okay? It's not even something I'm just gonna like put in my bank just to collect. I'll be using all these extra whips I do get and feeding it off to my Absolute Tentacle whip. So I can probably start using the Absolute Tentacle at raids again. It's super, super good for own fight, like best in slot. Spicy kebabs, man. You always know where to spot these imps dude okay come on this is uh number three that i'm gonna be opening on video let's check it out man badoodle oh room plate licks <laughs> check this out guys 83 mining so if i use the special tag i do have access to some rune ores so i want to show you guys my ore stack so far mainly from mother load and like zora and a few other uh, monsters so I have a shit ton of coal and iron ore as I've mentioned before. I think mainly for this week I'm going to try to burn through uh, the gold ores and the adamant ores and the uh, runite ores. Because I want to get that 88 smithing that I mentioned like on the last episode. So the goal is to be able to get to that so I can use the regular stout to boost to 89 and that way I can make a shit ton of rune darts they're gonna be like my next best thing for blow piping at like raids and stuff first appear of the day for a oh my god yo freaking just got a dust battle staff i haven't gotten this item before i'm at like almost 40 superiors now so we got uh, our first item so i got a small steel dragon task and uh, i wanted to go ahead and test out this dragon hunter crossbow you know whoa first hit already landed Okay, I'm gonna go test out the spec, you know. Oh, it doesn't have a spec? Rest in peace. 46! Alright, come on. Let's see if we can do better than this. That's uh, 42. Nice. So the Dragon Hunter Crossbow is a 10% accuracy and damage increase against specifically dragons and also things like wyverns. So what I've noticed that especially on monsters like dragons with very high defense, the Dragon Hunter Crossbow is definitely very good because the accuracy uh, makes your hits more consistent and not miss as much. Oh, uh, come on, you almost dead yet? Nice, okay, we're back at the Scotizo Grind Part 2. And uh, from last time, I gained an additional 2 totems. So we got a 6 to play around with. Alright, this hard clue from first Scotizo of the day. Wait, got the plate legs? Deposit? Oh, I don't. That's a unique item. Hell yeah. Three more uh, totems, I guess, left after this. Here we go. Oh, shit. Elite Clue Scroll. Oh, there we go. Chasm of Fire. That should help me get to this clue a lot quicker. Nice. Just a, a short walk to this clue spot. And obviously, there's a ton of Master Clue Area spots here, too. So that fairy ring is a godsend for that. Alright, let's check this out, man. Uh, second last hard clue of the day, probably. Oh, wow, dude. Armadale D high boots. Alright, will this confirm it? Yes, it is another unique item. Two unique items so far today. But doodle! Oh, damn it, man. Oh, wait, you know what? The badoodle kind of worked. We got another elite clue scroll. So, I guess I can be doing a back to back masters right after this. Unfortunately, all the totems are done. So last master was the second boot of darkness. So let's check it out. Oh my goodness. Hosidious hood. That's a unique item right there. I've never gotten that. That's for sure. Alright. That's two hoods I think on my collection now. Yep. I got the lava kench and the Hosidious. Cool. I got another master to do. So let's go and do that. King Black Dragon's Lair, equip a Black Dragon High Body, Black Dragon High Vamps, and a Black Dragon Mask. God damn it, man. The only freaking emo clue item I don't have. The Black Dragon Mask. Feels bad, dude. And I'm about to finish this too on the last goddamn step, dude. Oh, okay, well, you know, I'm just gonna keep it for now because I don't have any elite clues on me, so... Alright, there we go. I've been uh, solo om in a while, but nice. Got myself a pretty good PR. Wow, actually, I PR by a lot because, like, 
my fastest solo raid with my method uh, before this was 40 minutes about and yeah this sort of raid was 37.45 and it was mainly due to the layout alright guys first smithing level in a long ass time and it is 85 smithing I can now make rune daggers and attach sigils yay I guess if I ever get another one I can just do that by myself cool so the goal again is to get the 88 smithing so that's about 1.2 mil XP away actually a little bit less at this point so yeah let the smithing grind begin hopefully I can get it done all within this week alright felt like doing a small corporal beast session to start off the uh, 500 KC grind and I'm most likely gonna go for probably uh, 10 to 12 kills today and and I was thinking maybe 100 KC a month or something you know and then within a month's time I'll have a uh, 500 KC yes nice man cannonballs cool cool that's a uh, first noticeable drop already two kills in only so that's pretty damn good goddamn okay wow there we go man pretty good harvest today from corporal beast man nice dude that means I have more blessed spirit shields than I I do have normal spirit shields okay oh whoa the badoodle kind of worked you know so we got some nice drops in uh, 12 kills today this is gonna be the inventory for the 86 smithing beautiful and I can make a bunch of uh, addy stuff and a rune axe so I've been uh, doing Blast Furnace for quite a bit now and look at the XP rate dude, it's freaking crazy. I never thought I could get over 270k. So it is possible to sustain this type of experience rate using gold bars here, but it is very unlikely because it requires the machine to be constantly operational and there's no downtime. So that means there's always somebody working and fixing the machine. And that's not the case most of the time. Most of the time there's like downtime every now and then. So usually your smithing rate with gold bars isn't anywhere near as high, it's more like 200k. So I got lucky today and there's somebody constantly fishing the machine. Freaking elite clue scroll, dang. <laughs> there we go. The night beast is dead and I got a totem top. You know, this superior is so tanky, I'm gonna bring like a dragon warhammer next time. just. So I can kill a little bit faster because so slow to kill otherwise even with like piety on and you know all the accuracy that you can have all right a second night beast killed this task and just the regular stuff man all right guys this is gonna be the last inventory for the 87 smithing right there dude oh baby one more smithing level to go I cannot wait these rune darts like I've been waiting to use those forever so at this point I am done with all of my gold ores only got a hundred left so the next things I gotta do now is convert all my rune ores into bars I can already do that at 85 and with the remaining experience I need to get 88 I'll just make adamant bars using my adamant ores and we should be good so I have smelted all of my 2000 plus rune ore into the bars and I gotta say the experience for that is pretty good as well. I was getting consistent 90 to 93,000 smithing experience an hour, which is pretty good, even for the highest ores, you know, requiring the most uh, coal and more trips just to produce the same amount of bars as I would like a gold bar. The experience is still pretty damn nice, even just for smithing bars. So it's time to move on to the adamant bars. Obviously, I wanted to check out what the experience rates were like making adamant bars, and I am kind of surprised that they're about the same as Runite. I thought it would be more. Okay, so I think I'm done making adamant uh, bars now. I made about 2,400 ish, and I still got plenty of the adamant ores and uh, mithril ores and even iron ores. So, if I ever really want to make them, I can for uh, more smithing experience, but. I have pretty much gotten my goal completed for the smithing. The only thing left I have to do is basically convert the bars. So I'm going to convert these bars and that should get me the last smithing experience that I need for the 88 and then the rune bars will be converted as well. I am at a Berthar pub right downstairs where the minigame room used to be 
And uh, basically this place got some really nice stouts and beers and all that. Look at this, 12 Dwarven stouts all in one spot. So it's very easy for me to collect a shit ton of these. Making rune darts with boosting is no problem. Even with the timer reduction, you know, with resetting the stats and stuff being a problem nowadays. So I was planning on turning all the runite bars into dart tips, but I realized that, you know, 20,000 is actually a lot already, and I cannot see myself using all 20,000 anytime soon. So I think I'm gonna end it here for now. So I am basically done with the smithing gold. That was quite a few days worth of grinding, honestly. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's always nice to gold skilling for a very good cause. Holy mother of god, look at the fletching experience rates with rune dart. This is not something you can really do on uh, normal occasions, that's for sure. Really a once in a lifetime event, honestly. Fletching 20,000 rune darts. Jesus Christ, 1.4 million fletching experience. Alright guys, I am done making my rune darts. I'm stopping at 24,000, saving a few uh, tips for master clues, but that was intense. Holy shit, dude. Look at this. 459,000 experience was gained in basically about, yeah, 20-ish minutes of time. That was a shit ton of clicking, but well worth. Oh, baby. So, hmm, I am very excited to go back to raids with these bad boys now. So I do still have a shit ton of adamant dart tips that I could use for backup. So yeah, I am uh, definitely all set in ammunition for the blowpipe. Mm. So one of my good Ironman friends named Iron Cub, he decided to reboot his YouTube channel. So he used to do quite a bit of uh, Ironman progress and uh, now he's come back pretty strong and his Ironman content is focused on very high level Ironman content. He's going for pet completion, which is a pretty crazy goal and also a few other goals, but I'm pretty sure that's his main thing right now. So I will link his YouTube channel at the end of the video. And of course, Inferno is coming out next Thursday, so I will be looking forward to showing you guys my progress on that as well. Other than that, if you are new to the channel and you would like to stay up to date with future videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to give the video a like as well. I would highly appreciate that. Otherwise, I hope to see you guys soon with another video in a few days, hopefully with some more amazing games. Take care.